How's it going folks? Big T here and today we're checking out the classic EQ and when I say classic I mean the original release of it. Uh, if you've seen my last one, last EQ video we did a look at the new tutorial and I kind of horse around. Well today we're going to see what it was like back in 1999. Well kinda because Later expansions, they would release updated visuals for the NPCs, and of course later the uh, graphics on everything pretty much got better. You be good, cat. Originally, this is what the models look like. This was back in the day of PlayStation 1 and N64, so this was kind of what, you know, we expected. And back then, this was incredible. And that's actually part of the magic of EQ. I've often wondered why I keep going back to a game that's 20 years old. It hasn't, you know, if you look around, there's a lot better looking MMOs, but this one, it's just so well put together. The gameplay still holds up. And today we're also going to be talking a little bit about part of the magic of EQ. Now the reason I'm in Surefall Glades is when I very first started, this was my starting city. And I wandered around here for hours because when the game first came out, not many people had played any MMOs, and if they had, it was usually some kind of mud dungeon to where, well, I guess that's kind of redundant, but it was usually some kind of mud to where your group had to stay together no matter what. If you tried to break away from your group, you didn't. And I'd never played, the only other big one that I know was out was uh, Ultima Online, and I never played it, so I can't really comment on it. I do know this was the first 3D one, and when it came out, I had never even imagined anything like this. I'd played some D&D, &D, but again, that was usually a case of your group either stayed together or they were within close proximity. There was no, oh, well, I'm going to go off and do my own thing. You guys stay here for eternity. It was all new, and I had played some... Up till this point, pretty much all I had played was like the original uh, RPGs like Final Fantasy, Dragon Warrior, the originals. And that's a big part, I think, of this game's magic is the fact that up till this point, none of us, and when I say none of us, I'm going to be generalizing. I actually mean most of the people that originally played this game, but deal with it. So when I first logged into this game, I was like, oh, okay, well, this is a starting city. Wandered around, wandered around, and, and I remember thinking, da, 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 what's that? Is that a waterfall? Oh, well, that's got to be a secret, right? So I'd travel back here, and then it's like, oh, grizzly bears. And if you're a ranger, they actually look at you friendly. And that was another thing I'd never seen, was the fact that depending on what kind of class you were, what kind of race you were, it depended, it would actually affect your factions to where... If I was to go uninvisible right now, since I'm a bard... I would be killed. Well, I wouldn't be killed, but the bears would attack me. And let's see, let's get out of here real quick. And bear in mind, when the game first came out, there was no map system. So you would wander around for a very long time trying to figure out. And then I found this cave, and I'm like, where are we going? What kind of magic could hide behind here? It's a very long cave. And boom, the music kicks in. Yes, folks, there is music. Last time I said there wasn't. 
And when I fired it back up, I just realized that I'd had my sound shut off. Well, my music shut off. So, sorry about that. Now, when I, last time I played, I made the comment that no one wanted to play healers. And sorry about that, Jen. I should have explained a little bit better. But the reason nobody really wanted to play a healer is because since most of us had only played regular RPGs, the offline, like Dragon Warrior, Final Fantasy, Breath of Wind, or no, Breath of Fire. You wanted to be the big, strong hero. You wanted to be the, you know, st Star Wall hero who runs through, destroys everything. Because up till that point, most RPGs, you would... Cat, be good. Up till that point, most RPGs, you would find... You would either find a healer along the way, or you would find healing potions... Well, there are healing potions in this game, but yeah, they were super, super expensive. And there are now new healing potions in the game that are a lot more affordable, but when the game first came out, the healing potions were around, I think, 60 plat, maybe more. Oh, and plat's the currency in the game. Well, when it first came out, Getting five plat was almost an achievement in itself, because killing all this li all these little critters around here would well, let's see, hippity poppy, bacon, nothing. I could sell these for roughly six copper a piece, and when the game first came out, it took forever to level up. Obviously, whenever you level up, you get more money. But, when the game first came out, you would spend a lot of time grinding your newbie area. And I would later find out that this is not one of the best newbie areas. But, it was my newbie area. And, I absolutely loved it. Just for an example, I'm going to run... Hopefully, I run the right way. To show you another example of a newbie area... But that was my newbie area to start with, and I absolutely loved it, except for the Will-O-Wisp. Because the Will-O-Wisp, when the game first came out, you usually had just some junk sword, uh, club, something to that extent, maybe a dagger. And, yeah, the Will-O-Wisp, you need a magic weapon to hit. Magic weapons were very hard to come by, and if you attacked one... They would kill you, and it would be bad, unless if you either had magic, or you had a magic weapon. I didn't have a magic love weapon, probably till my, uh, mid-levels. And when the game first came out, the mid, it was, say, round 1 to 10 was your newbie levels. Then, what the heck was that? A grimp. Oh yeah, the, I'll talk about that here in a minute. But when the game first came out, 1 to 10 was probably your newbie levels. 10 to 20 was, we'll just say, your teen levels, which I know don't quite make sense, but bear with me. Let's see. Then 20 to 30 was your high range. And then 30 to, well, actually, probably 20 to 40 was your mid range. And then, uh,. 40 to 50 was your end game type stuff because 50 was the max level at the time. Right now, I think it's 110. My character is level 96, so I'm way overpowered for anything in the classic, but it's still fun to run around and do stuff like this. Oh, I remember when you were tough. Boop, you're dead. Now, I'd later find this town by just wandering around and I accidentally bumped into it. Now imagine going from that little cave to seeing this. The gates of Koinos. I was like, oh my god, this is incredible. It's a castle. I thought it was a castle. It's really just a town. But you could wander around here. Is, it, is this Crow's Bar? No. 
you could come in here. There was actual shops. I didn't show it, but Surefall Glade has one shop and a couple of little whatnot vendors. And seeing all the guards wandering around, it was mind blowing. Coming in here. Oh, what's this? Crows. Oh, you got a bouncer. Oh, this is a full blown bar. Yay, I can get drunk. And if you get drunk, it's a little disoriented, but it's kind of fun. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Again, good at that. That's the great thing about this game, is it's very easy to get sidetracked because it is still fun, and I can't believe I'm already lost. Well, the way the game was set up is most places would have a newbie level to where you could run around killing basically trash. Everything was level 1 to 3, so you would spend a lot of time in your newbie area, and it kind of let you learn the game, but again, keep in mind, this was when most of us had only played single player RPGs to where we did not know how to effectively play this game or even any kind of MMOs because at the time you know it was very simple you killed until you leveled up finished all the quests then you would go out and you would go to the next section, find a new town, kill all the monsters there, finish the quest. It was very simple, really. Well, I mean, the games had depth, but the gameplay was fairly simple. We, did, we didn't know what we were getting ourselves into. And it was so much fun. I think that's where a big part of the magic comes from. It was like playing Dark Souls for the first time. You were playing, but you really didn't know what you were doing. And once you started to figure out what you were doing, it was a grand old time. Now here, I remember seeing this for the first time. There's a knoll there. Oh, I could take him out. Boom, kill him. And that's what's in here. Why does this thing look like a dragon's mouth? Then you would enter this, and the first time I entered here, I got killed immediately. Because, again, not knowing the terminology at the time, but there was a train here. What a train is, is it's a case of somebody going too deep, not being able to handle it, and running for the zone. Because if you run zone, you clear all the mobs off of it. Problem is, if anybody's standing here, chances are they're going to get smushed. And yeah, I got smushed. And I spent a lot of time here, and I died a whole lot. Because this was all I knew. I went from Buenos Hills to here because I thought that was the natural possess possession progression. And... I had no idea. Then I met a barbarian in here. The barbarian tells me, oh, you should come to Everfrost sometime. I'm like, well, what's that? Oh, it's his, well, it was his newbie area. And I was like, oh, well, what's there? Oh, we've got all kinds of fun stuff. There's snow, there's wolves, there's goblins. <gasps> a goblin, what's a goblin? So then I would follow him here. And we'd eventually go to the town of Hallis. But, unfortunately, when I went to Hallis the first time, I hung out there, logged off, and let's see. This here is their newbie area, the Barbarian newbie area. I got lost because no map. I died. Again and again. But eventually, I'd find my way back. And when the game first came out... If you died, your corpse would sit there rotting while you had to start back at whatever town you were bound at, which... Oh yeah, there's a goblin. Oh, crap. Isn't he cute? Hey, bear. But you would have to start at 
whatever town you started at butt naked with a chunk of your XP gone and there was just nothing you could do you could you had to run back to your corpse in order to I feel like messing with that guy you had to run back to your corpse just to get your stuff back and if you could not find your stuff in a set amount of time you lost it it was gone forever history sorry tough luck kid hey there's Santa Claude anything for Santa Claude Santa Claude drug had to mesmerize me how rude Oh, Santa Clog is right now I'm playing it right around Christmas time. So there's GM events, which is where the game masters would either have just new mobs running around, or sometimes they would actually get involved with themselves and they would run around doing different stuff. In this case, it's more of a holiday theme, but there was also wars that would happen one time the frog locks took over the troll homeland and I was playing a troll at the time so yeah it, it was messy I, I wasn't happy but that was part of the magic was the fact that you never know you could log on crazy stuff would be happening you'd jump in on it and boom, you were there. Now, where I'm at now, Everfrost Peaks, it's not unique, but it is pretty cool in the fact that you have the newbie area where you run around levels 1 to 5. You have the, well, I guess you'd say the teen area. Excuse me, where you could probably level up from 5 to 15 then you had the 20 area where I'm at now then you'd come across this now being from Quinos Hills I figured this was a case of oh well this must be their dungeon okay so it's probably a lower level 2 I'm gonna go here and see what's here doody doody do wow this place sure is big it's not like good old uh, Blackboro. And then I got smushed by this guy. See, he tried to smush me that time. Doesn't work so well now, does it? Huh? Try that again, man. I dare you. I'll bust you up. Oh, I'm sorry. But there was an easier way to get here. But, of course, I didn't know it at the time. So I died. Which meant... Sure fall glades, heading back, trying to find my corpse, finding my corpse, finding a giant, getting smushed, running back, doing it all over again until I could finally get all my stuff. Yes, the game was tough when it first came out. Now, I'm not going to say it's easy. It's definitely not an easy game, but it is a lot easier than it was when it first came out. Now, the reason I'm actually here is even though I'm not going to be able to show it to you, but I'd heard tales that there was a dragon here, which of course when the game first came out, there wasn't 101 websites dedicated to it, so it sounded like complete BS. But you always wanted to know could it be is there really and I remember coming here and having a blast with my brother we went everywhere here but this would be where the dragon actually is box and the first time I seen her of course I died almost immediately but just seeing it was so incredible because it was like oh, there are dragons it was magic. It was one of those moments to where it's like, this game is incredible. I can't believe that something like this exists. How did it... 
Why haven't I played stuff like this before? And it was absolutely mind-boggling at the time. So I talked a little bit about how the newbie areas often led into some kind of dungeon. Well, most of them also had an outdoor area, and I think the reason that there were outdoor areas was due to the fact that although dungeons often had better XP, better loot, the outside was just a whole lot safer. You could run away a lot easier, and one of the cool things was about being in a newbie area was since there were so many guards, if there was a if there was a something attacking you and you can make it to a guard, the guard would actually kill whatever was attacking you. So it had that relative bit of safety, and there were some areas out in the open world where there would be like guard towers and you could run to them. But the further you got into the game, the less effective the guards would be, and there were a few places that. If you got attacked and you tried to run to the guard, whatever the mob was had a good chance of killing the guard and then coming for you. And I'm going to try getting to a different spot. Well, actually, since we got time, I'll sit here and talk about it. Now, when the game first came out, like I said, nobody really knew how to play. The proper way, of course, to play MMO is you needed a tank, a DPS, and a healer. That was, you know, that would be the facto. Uh, that just sounds stupid. That would be the default way of playing. That would be the way that you wanted to play. And we didn't know that at the time. We just had a bunch of people that wanted to play a class that sounded fun. And Rangers quickly became the, at least where I started, and I know there were more, like the Barbarians often had a large amount of Shaman and uh, had some fighters, but it was mostly... Shaman, and I forget what other one that they played quite a bit of. Oh, Rogues. But where I was at, there was a lot of Rangers, and a lot of classes could be Rangers. And the problem with that was, well, the game didn't have the best itemization, especially early game. So there was a huge amount of rangers and there were hardly any actual tank tanks and the reason why was because if you played a ranger you got all these cool spells you could take a hit fairly decent you could wear a chain oh yeah that's another thing i should probably mention there's cloth armor which of course is your typical uh caster type stuff you had leather armor for rogues and their ilk then you had chain armor, which was mostly rangers and a couple of other classes. Then you had plate, which was your tanks and your bards. Oh, and clerics. The problem was, there wasn't a whole lot of plate to be had till you were probably in your 20s. Which, from a realistic standpoint, you know, it makes sense. You probably don't want that to come out too soon. But the problem was, is that once blacksmiths figured out how to make banded armor, which is a type of chain armor, all the rangers were wearing it, and it was probably one of the better mid-game armors that you could have for a ranger. But since it was fairly easy to make, I'm well, it was the go-to armor for a lot of classes. And since tanks didn't get their plates till much later, they felt a little gypped. And I'll go into that in a minute. I gotta tell a quick story here. So a friend of mine tells me, hey, you've got to come check out this Wes Carnes. I was like, why? I'm in Blackboro. He's like, we die in Blackboro. Come here. Trust me. The loot's worth it. The XP's worth it. So I said, oh, okay. Well, that sounds good. 
someplace safer? All right. So I zone into here, the Western Plains of Karna. Yeah, that sounds great. Can't wait, this is gonna be exciting. I zone in and I die. Not to a train like in good old Blackboro, due to a werewolf. Now there is one werewolf in this zone and he wanders around. He found me. I immediately called my friend a bunch of bad names. I'm like, that, that was me, man. Why'd you do that? He's like, what are you talking about? Why aren't you here yet? I said, because I got killed. How did you get killed on your zone in? I said, because uh, a werewolf. That place is obviously too high. Come back. We'll find you. And werewolf, come on, man. You can do better than that. That was the great thing. There was rare mobs here. There were... Excuse me. There were mobs that would only appear if certain conditions were met. There were some that only appeared at night. Some only would, you know, run the entire zone. Some would do this. Some would do that. What's that? Wandering spirit. That didn't come till later, but I'll explain that probably in my next video. But that was a great thing. He didn't believe that it could happen because he had never seen the werewolf. And it was such a rare occurrence that it almost became like urban legends in the game. Like, really? Uh, werewolf? There's no such thing as werewolves in the game. And if there are, they'd be much later. Nope, they were there. Anyway, back to my rangers versus tanks. So you had... Let's see, you had the da, 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 ranger wearing... The chain armor or the banded armor you had warriors you had uh, shadow knights and paladins all wearing it but the problem was rangers had offense and defense spells and camouflage all kinds of neat stuff so why would you want to play as a warrior all a warrior has is a couple more hit points well a uh, ranger can heal those hit points warriors can't why would you want to play a paladin? Paladins, well, okay, paladins were actually kind of cool because they could heal in a pinch and had a little bit better heal. They didn't have a whole lot of offensive spells. You could play as a Shadow Knight, but they had crap pets and they were generally considered evil, so they got killed at a lot of places. Let's see if I can sneak up on these guys. First time I seen one of these, it's a Cyclops. Well, this is named Cyclops. Killed me. Another case of there's no such thing as Cyclops is here. Yeah, yeah, there is. And this zone is so big. Keep in mind, I'm running at bard speed, which is quite possibly the fastest way to get around other than teleporting. And this zone was huge. So no map meant you just had to hope you could figure out where you were at. And I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, there's roads. But it's basically just a bunch of trees to where trying to figure out where you died so you could find your corpse was a huge pain. But the cool thing is... Almost every class had what you might call a special power. Hey, it's a werewolf hunters. Oh, bandits. And what I mean by special powers like bards could run mega super fast. They could buff up their group in it with all kinds of crazy spells that you couldn't do for that other classes couldn't do. And they could run fast, which I know might not sound like much, but when you're playing a game where you need to run away fairly often, being able to run fast is incredible. And you had necromancers that they had a spell called Find Corpse. They could actually find your corpse. Higher level ones could actually summon your corpse. Usually they'd do it for a fee, but that was the cool thing was since we were all learning the game, we would all compare notes like, hey, what 
what, what can a necromancer do? Oh, a necromancer can do this. Oh, well, what can your class do? Oh, well, I'm a ranger. I can track really well. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Uh, you're a druid. What can you do? Oh, well, I could teleport to different nature areas. Oh, wow. Wizard, what do you do? I make things go boom. And <laughs> well, you're a warrior. What do you do? I get hit a lot. But I make it to where you don't get hit a lot. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. And <laughs> of course, I'm oversimplifying it. But when we all first started, a lot of us didn't play two or three tunes. So we didn't really know a whole lot of the game's inner working. So it would all be told. And it felt like such a super adventure instead of going to websites finding out oh okay well this class does this this class does this and let's see these bastards killed me a lot back in the day it was such a special treat when I finally was able to kill them because they would wander around mid-level zones and they hit like a truck but anyway anybody that's played it knows what I'm talking about but finding out, like, I think it was actually this next zone I'm getting ready to enter was the first time I met a druid and I found the spell called Spirit of Wolf, which made you run a whole lot faster. So it was just incredible. I was like, I want a druid at all times. Now shamans get the spell earlier, but I hadn't met a whole lot of shamans, oddly enough. And I think that was probably because they were, when they first came out, it was kind of a hard class to understand. They got a lot of stat buffs, but most of us didn't really know what the stats were used for. We had ideals, like obviously intelligence would give you magic, uh, wisdom would give certain casters magic, but, you know, oh, you can do that? Well, this class can give me uh, armor class, hit points, and this and this. And it got to the point where, again, we were all learning as we went. So it was so much fun finding out each class's special abilities, what they could and couldn't do. Like you'd find out eventually that, which, you know, it was a case of most RPGs at the time. If a wizard gets hit, they're probably going to die. So as we're learning different things, we're also exploring different areas. And that was a huge part of the magic for me because once I got to this zone, the Eastern Carnivus, I realized, hey, th this is a huge world. I want to see the rest of it. What else can I go do? And I think I ended up starting to play different characters around this point. And my ranger was around 20-something. Now keep in mind, I'd almost played, oh, maybe a year at the time. Oh, no, not quite a year because uh, Expansion hadn't came out. Uh, I'll show you a Minotaur real quick came to this place and I believe at the time this was just called the Minotaur Maze and I fought these buggers now keep in mind at the time those things were freaking terrifying and I remember fighting them because they dropped an axe hey what we got here it's an evil eye now these guys can actually charm you and if you're in a group and they charm you, you start attacking your group. And since we didn't know that charming meant, oh, I have no control. Groups would sit there and yell at you for the attacking them, which in hindsight was actually pretty silly because you can't attack other players unless you're dueling or you're playing on a PvP server. Quick side note, still the coolest looking guards slash mobs in the game.
Gotta show you my favorite zone the whole game. Now, originally, you had to take a boat. I'm not even sure if the boat still operates. But in order to traverse across, across continents, you'd have to take a boat, and the boat was a very long ride. Uh, I remember one time I actually took, I got on the boat, took a shower, got out of the shower, and I was still on the boat not even to my destination yet so I'm actually glad they got rid of the boat even though I do miss it in a weird sick sort of way now some time while I was playing somebody told me about this absolutely incredible place that I had to go visit Especially if I liked Funny and Undead, which for some weird reason is has always been one of my favorite things to do in games. Just because, I don't know, just killing undead just feels so natural, so much fun. And I was like, yeah, of course I want to try that out. Where's this place at? It's called the Estate of Unrest, and back in the day... Oftentimes we would use the full name of the place. Of course, now I just call it Unrest, and I think everybody else does too. But at the time, I'd heard it called The Estate. I'd heard it called The Estate of Unrest. Heard it called The State of Unrest. And also heard it called Train Station, because there were a ton of trains. You would die. First time I came here, I remember looking. Well, actually, the first time I came here, I died. Oh, yes, train. I remember seeing this and thinking, oh, well, this ain't so bad. It's just a, you know, typical castle. Got a couple of death beetles. Ooh, yeah, that really sounds scary. And then I just walked up to the doors, opened the doors, and I died. Because almost everything in here would attack you if you were a lower level uh, let's see oh actually now here you had this it's fatty up yeah good old fatty and spin man the great thing was is you had this place, you could go upstairs, and this was the very first time that I had ever seen this in the game, but if you came in here, okay, whew, I can finally rest, let me kill this guy, I can rest, things are okay, it's not so bad, ah, <sighs> safe place, ooh, I wonder if I can pick up one of these books, look at that, what's this, oh my gosh, there's more down here, and as stupid as it sounds, once you broke the basement, which is where I'm heading right now, this was actually the safest place because hardly anybody came down here. And if they did, they usually knew what they were doing. And you were basically hidden away from trains. Really, lady? And then you would kill down here and everything was fun. And one day I remember just running and I was like, oh, I must have hit a bug. What happened? Fake wall, baby. Let's see. Show you another little trick. I remember coming here and thinking, oh, that's a pool of blood. If I step in it, I will die. To the left and right, traps. You basically have to go right through the pool of blood. And you come down here. <gasps> There's a giant freaking mushroom. Ah, uh, cubby cubby ain't up. And this place holds such a special place in my heart because I remember so much about this zone. I had so many good times here. I met a lot of really cool people down here. Just absolutely loved it. Now, at the time of release, 
you either had to run out of the zone, have a wizard or druid that could teleport you out of there, or you had to be one of the casting classes that had gate, which would send you back to your hometown or wherever you were bound. And not having it meant you had to do a lot of running. So it was always a good idea to try and make friends with a caster of some sort so you had a way out. Elsie, if you're out there, I haven't forgotten you. Different server, yes, but yeah, I still remember you running me and Tacmana around everywhere. And that was the really cool thing. Uh, when the game first came out, it, it took forever to level, so you got to know your character really well, and if you found a group of friends that you played with, you became fr really good friends with them because you were doing all kinds of crazy adventures. You usually didn't out-level each other very fast. And even though that was on my first server... Uh, let's see what I'm going to show you next. Even though that was on my first server, I still have great memories of it. Eventually, I would switch over to the Fiona Bay server. And I've actually met a lot of really cool people on here. And I'm still friends with a lot of them today. Right now, I'm actually playing on the computer that a buddy of mine that I met on here gave me. What's up, Paul? It's good to see you, buddy. Tell Jody I said, hey, little Walter, too. Oh, not painting you. And I also got friends, Austin and Jennifer. How you guys doing? Met them on here, and that's what I mean. It, it's one of those magic things to where... Ah, my mouse sensitivity way too high. It was just such a great friend building experience to where everything was just so much fun. And now I'm kind of rambling, but this game still holds a magic place in my heart. Because I just remember thinking got to be the coolest thing ever. How did anybody ever come up with this? Okay, where I'm getting ready to go now is where the other dragon is. And again, I won't be able to actually show you the dragon because they are not rare spawns, but time spawns to where they only show up once every three days. Hey, baby, how you doing? Yeah, you shake that thing. Uh, and another thing, later they would actually put in a thing where if a high-level character goes into one of the earlier zones, I forget what level it is. I think it's either 51 or 52. If you go in there and the dragon sees you, it will actually kick you out of the zone. This was done once level caps started rising. Like right now, if I wanted to fight one of the dragons, I could actually kill it pretty much with ease. Just because I've out-leveled it so far. But, they put that in there because of the, a lot of the dragons have uh, special items that's needed for different quests for the younger players not younger players some of the lower level players so they would have it to where yeah I'd have it to where you could actually if you were a lower level you could still get in there still do your thing still have fun now the higher level folk yeah we were just kind of out of luck because of the fact that once you out leveled it you had to find other ways to get the items you needed and granted there are other ways to get it but there was just something magic about seeing the uh, first couple of dragons in the game This place actually got updated not too long back. 
Like it didn't originally look this cool. Hey, Nagy's Lair. Originally, this was a really perilous cliff jump almost just to get here. One of the other cool things about this was the fact that it was located closer to an evil town. So if you were a good guy and you were coming here, oh crap, something happened right here. Yep. Huh. Don't really want to impede on them. If they're down here doing stuff. I don't want to ruin their good time. So I think I'm going to stop it right here. And if you enjoyed it, leave me a like. Check out my Patreon. Check out Facebook. Whatever. Next time, I will probably be heading to the Ruins of Cunark. And I'll have stories for that. And until next time, be safe, have fun, and go out and kill a dragon.